from Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome to the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl, a part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Auburn's season began with championship aspirations. It veered a little off course, but the Tigers can still salvage the year with a bowl win. Purdue seeking back-to-back -back bowl wins for the first time in more than a decade. Handler Cox, the motion man. Stidham takes a step forward. Now floats one to Whitlow down the sideline. Whitlow cuts it back, middle of the field. Touchdown, Auburn, Jatarvius Whitlow, his longest catch of the season. 66 yards. Right here, you'll be able to see the linebackers in coverage here. He just gets picked on the outside edge. Wasn't quite able, and that's Jalen Alexander, who was supposed to be in coverage. Great job from Stidham of identifying the matchup. And I believe the, the play fake with the draw is what drew them in. And then now you allow yourself to get it to one of your more dynamic playmakers, and the rest is history. T touchdown, Tigers. PAT by Anders Carlson is good, and a fast start for Auburn. That is a scary sight when you have the best and most athletic player and the hardest worker. This kid's a star in the making. Blau under pressure, and he's taken down. Javaris Davis, one of the corners on the blitz. And it sets up second and long. That's a great blitz there from Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator. Just snuck that in from the backside. Ryan Davis in motion. The give is to Martin. Has the edge, cuts it upfield, lowers his head. And another nice run. That's a dozen yards. The second level to make things happen. Purdue rushing five. Blitz picked up. Stidham downfield again. And that is a catch by Seth Williams, the true freshman who has really come on in the second half of the season. I'll tell you what's so amazing about him at a 6'3", 210. This kid can run. I mean, you know, that long stride, he just continues to eat up grass and turf. And for the second time, it's just blown by. Whitlow. His second touchdown of the game, the one they call Booby. A receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown. And Auburn has made quite the opening statement. They are in a great rhythm. And I think, like I said, Coach Malzahn has just really mixed it up well. I mean, he's just peppered them all over the field and then mixing in those deep shots, holding those safeties high, allowing his running backs uh, to be able to, to work and to wiggle and navigate through the middle of the field. Auburn, right now offensively, is on fire. Auburn almost rediscovering its identity early, running the football with purpose. <laughs> Isaac Zico goes in motion. Play action. Blau steps up. Intercepted. Davis brings it inside the 20 and a red zone opportunity for Auburn. Yeah, for Dick. David Blau there, the, the best decision would have been to just swallow this football. Yeah, you know, and he, he gets creative. You'll see it. Now, he does a good job of dipping inside of the pocket. Keep in mind that this offensive line is something that Jeff Brom has said. You know, we've got guys that give great effort. We don't have a lot of guys that are going to be playing on Sundays at this front part. Whitlow will keep it and easily into the end zone for his third touchdown of the opening quarter. Let's give some credit to this offensive line for Auburn, who's struggled at times, quite frankly, whether that's protecting the quarterback or opening up creases and holes for the running backs throughout SEC play. They have completely manhandled the front seven for the Boilermakers. The AT is good, and for Purdue, Bennett linebacker, no Lorenzo Neal on the defensive line. It doesn't matter right now. The Tigers humming and rolling. Booby Whitlow 
leading the way. He's been reliable. And, and the, the fact is, is I think Moore has opened up more one-on-one -on -one opportunities for him, and he's taken advantage. Edge pressure again. This one caught by Moore. Slips a tackle. And shoved out of bounds across the 40, a gain of 16. You look at Rondell Moore's build, 5'9", 175. He squats 600. Well, but this is how you get through a tackle like this. You know, it's Pass interference, not a spot foul in college. Blau has Rondell Moore in the flat. And Moore fights forward, and he's going to be close to a first down. You see that second gear, that, that stutter step. I call the place, I'll make sure you get the football. And he has. Brought down by the native Nashvillian, Bryson Hopkins, for a first down. Young man played his high school ball at Ensworth. Rondell Moore on the fly sweep. Moore, stutter step. And he is in for a touchdown. Yeah, you're looking at a superstar. Yeah, and this guy will be on people's Heisman list. The stutter step, though. It, it, I, no more than I just got done talking about it, and it's so hard to defend because I'm serious. If you're not running and giving 100%, right? They're, they're just, it, did he get in here? Absolutely. That left foot crosses the line. Look, it's so difficult because you've got to be given everything you've got to catch this kid because he's so fast and explosive. And when he stutters you like that, it really causes you to pause, which now allows him to get around that corner. Rondell Moore is a very special player in the Purdue Boilermakers. He has changed the dynamic of this program. All you got to do is uh, throw in the tape of the Ohio State game where he put on a show. He's the real deal, and I think he's here to stay. In his first collegiate game, he could be a very special player. The young man from Miami played there at Central, um, sophomore. He's got all the, the talent to be good. Stidham all day. Down the seam. Caught by Slayton, and he can take this to Timbuktu. Conversations with defensive coordinator for Purdue yesterday, Nick Holt. He said this. He said, I'm not sure if we have the speed to run with some of their elite athletes. And this is unfolding right before our eyes. Darius Slayton, I mean, he's, he's beat the brakes off of this secondary early on. I mean, he's been behind coverage multiple times. In fact, Sidham missed him once today. I mean, it's you've got to keep him in front. And, and I don't know if that means you, you play more off coverage and, and, and don't give up the big play. But whatever they're doing right now is not working. You, you come out, you get a negative play, you get a tackle for loss, and then you come back, and in the secondary, you give up a big play like this. This is demoralizing to a defense just as you start to get some momentum. And right now, the Tigers are licking their chops. Here he's put together one of the finest seasons by a Purdue quarterback. Third team all-conference honors. Now, third and ten. Four-man rush by Auburn. Blau, jump pass. He's got Jones. And Jones is going to be tackled about a yard shy. If they went for it earlier on this drive, you got to assume the offense stays out of the field. To try to win their one-on-one -on -one matchup because it's been a rough day for Blau. The give is to Markel Jones, and he is devoured by Derek Brown and Dontavious Russell at the line of scrimmage. It will be Auburn ball. Well, that's a highlight reel there play for, for Derek Brown. And, uh, and if you don't know who this kid is, he'll be uh, one of the first players taken in the draft. Just a phenomenal force, power, and fortitude right there in the middle. He <laughs> could pick up on it one time. <laughs> Jeez. I'm not helping there, buddy. <laughs> Screen pass to Slayton. Slayton breaks free. First down and four. Slayton runs past the entire Purdue defense. Are you kidding me? Ooh. He turned on the afterburners. Now, I knew this kid was fast, but geez Louise. I mean, they come back to the screen. Great blocking up front, particularly from Markel Harrell. But listen. 
The burner's there? I mean, destroy. He did his own version of Rondell Moore. We've been talking about his speed and just um, how explosive he can be in the back half of runs. Slayton today has destroyed this defense. I mean, he's had touchdowns already of 74 yards, 52 yards. Early on in this first half, I mean, he has to be the MVP. <laughs> Auburn's got quite a few candidates for that. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Booby Whitlow's got three touchdowns. <laughs> okay, you got me. <laughs> Stidham is six for eight, 250 right, you got me. You got yards. Me. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Auburn doing what it wants offensively. A touchdown on every five. So, but it is. It's uh, phenomenal. We were also following our guy, Adam <laughs> Jupiter. Which this sense of direction can right. sometimes be off. He leaves you <laughs> off the beaten path. <laughs> Unintentionally. Blast pass batted down. It's intercepted by Big Cat Bryant. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for Purdue. And everything coming up golden for Auburn. David Blau at 6'1", 205. He's going to have an opportunity, I think, to play in the NFL. But Dontavious Russell there batting the ball down. And Big Cat Bryant taking it in the end zone. This will be the question mark. You know, can he throw over the taller defensive lineman? But once again, that pressure was right in his face. And, and he's had that all day today. He's been knocked down. And this time a batted down pass uh, results in a touchdown for Auburn as they are pouring it on here in Nashville. On third down, Wow. has heard him in, and he is tackled immediately. Going to be a couple of yards shy of the marker, and it would not surprise us to see Jeff Brom go for it. I think they're going to punt the football here. And Sal Canella, the black belt in karate, brings it down for an Auburn first down. Great catch. That thing was zipped in there. That is a first down catch. Auburn continues to move the chains. Griffin King. Schwartz. Got a great block by Cox, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. One of the unsung heroes of the Auburn offense is number 27, Chandler Cox, who held the block long enough for Schwartz to get in. Yeah, and all you need to is just for a split second for him to catch the edge. And once again, I think this is a good play call, you know, and perfect position as Cox just controlled the defender. And when you push him back like that, now it allows him to have that short edge. And when he turns the corner Schwartz it's very different than other players young man from Pembroke Pines Florida is fast Schwartz wants to run for Team USA at the 2020 Tokyo Games that's the it. type of speed <laughs> he has Auburn six drives six touchdowns to be able to witness a young man endure this time has been has been has been great experience for them to be able to understand that life is so precious and valuable. As Derek Brown gets into the backfield for a sack on third down, four-man twist by Purdue. Stidham steps up over the middle, and that is caught by Seth Williams. Another first down by Auburn. And the Tigers move the chains. Purdue has yet to stop the Auburn offense. Three hundred yards passing for Stidham in the first half. Looking for more. Slayton. He's got it. His third touchdown of the first half. And as you watch film of this Boilermaker defense, Antonio Blackman 
has been a guy, because Kenneth Major and Kaysen have played well opposite of him, it's been a guy that they've, they've really picked on. And um, they found a matchup today the Tigers have that they find that they have found favorable, and they have gone to it. And to the credit of, of Slayton, he's caught those deep balls. Not only has he created that separation, he's finished those plays. That one even having to come back to the football and make a play. But <laughs> this offense is on fire. They're stretching the field. You know, and if you're Blackman right there, once once he gets up on your toes, you try to do a good job of coming. The interior of the line has had some issues. They feel they're a little better now with Caleb Kim back at center. But he does feel, as you said, and the O-line could be pretty good next year. A lot of returning power on that unit. Wide open Schwartz. And Schwartz brought down inside the Purdue 35 by Thieneman. A gain of 33, another explosive play by this Auburn offense. Shivers. And he picks up a first down for Auburn. Barnes brings him down. Much older than the rest of the group. Little misdirection, Ryan Davis into the end zone for a touchdown. And I think if you're Knicks, I've always said this, if you're a young player and you're going to come in and impact the game, you've got to be a lot like Juan Delmore was for the Boilermakers. First and foremost, find your niche. Find what you're the best on the team at. Second point is be hungry. You know, don't be satisfied by maybe moving up the depth chart or performing well in one game. And the last part of that, right, is to be humble. Nobody wants to play with a guy who's haughty and who thinks he's the, the world's best. Stay humble, and that's how you impact the stat sheet. That's how you impact your team, and that's how you win jobs early on as a young player. And, and, and I, I think he'll have an opportunity to do that if he does those things. Auburn has just set the SEC record for most points by an SEC team in a bowl game. The player, listen, man, even if you're not, if you know, you can, you can come into this game. It's a nice ball. And one of the, the only explosive plays today that uh, Rondell Moore has had and as Purdue is trying to get something going here offensively. But he threw risk management your way, come on. <laughs> At Georgia third Tech. down. A draw by Blau, and the fifth-year senior coasting into the end zone. Great timing on the play call there. Jeff Brown feeling that the pressure was coming, and he had the perfect play call in response to the pressure that Auburn brought. As David Blau showing his athletic ability there. And this is a design run, no doubt about it. This was set up, called in advance, expecting them to bring the heat. The kick by Evans is good. Feels a little like a pebble in the ocean, but it's something for Purdue. Some positivity. David Blau in his final game as a Boilermaker does it himself. A smile on Gus Malzahn's face. Auburn puts up a bowl record 56 points in the opening half. Impressive. They go on to win 63-14. It's been a rough month for Gus Malzahn. Speculation about his future with the Tigers. Speculation as to what his job status was going to be and will be going forward. He probably turned the temperature down at least a couple of degrees, calling the plays today. And Auburn was nearly perfect about it.